Who Thank says you. crime doesn't pay, eh, Robin? I don't know who says that, but our next guest has made a living writing about murder, devious deeds, and criminal cons. He's a syndicated newspaper columnist. He's also the author of more than 20 books on the subject. His latest book is Celebrity Murders. It tells the stories of a number of well-known people and their untimely ends. Please welcome author Max Haynes. Yeah, Max. Yeah. Come on out here, Max. Nice to see you. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Nice to have you here. Have a seat beside Steve. Good to have you. This is a fascinating book, and I, I don't know, the public is generally so intrigued by, by murder in general, but also by celebrity murder in particular. Well, all the people in the book are famous and infamous yeah. people, and names that people would recognize, such as the Kennedys and uh, assassinations of four of the presidents, uh, John uh, Lennon, and mm -hmm. these type of people. But I think among the most interesting murders in here, if, you, if that's the right term for murder, sure. are the Hollywood murders. For example, Fatty Arbuckle's one yes. of your first, uh, what you talk, which completely destroyed his career. And there was some ambiguity about whether he was framed, whether it was a bum rap. In fact, he was acquitted, I understand, but the taint of that charge followed him Finished for the rest of his, his life. career, yeah. yeah. That happens sometimes. Sometimes people can overcome things like this that happened to them. And, mm -hmm. But uh, in Fatty's case, it was the end of his career. And he arguably was the funniest guy in his era. He was mm -hmm. the top of the heap. I was saying to you before the show, actually, a lot of people in the O.J. trial said that O.J. was the biggest trial since Fatty Arbuckle, and it's neat to see both of them profiled, because you have O.J. in the book as well. That's right. Of course, O.J. is, is uh, in a class, well, of course, the, like you say, Fatty Arbuckle was a, was a notorious crime at the time, mm -hmm. but uh, O.J. is in a class by himself for the present day murder, mainly because the, the, the entire proceedings were televised. That's right. It became a way of life for, That's right. for people watching the OJ trial. There's so many interesting uh, crimes in here, uh, and crimes of passion, I think, are, are among them interesting. Uh, and also crimes of fraud. I, I, I remember myself, the Clifford Irving fiasco years yes. ago, which was an interesting scam, if there ever was one. He pretended to be who? What was Howard he? Hughes. Howard Hughes. Yes. He wrote a book, wrote claiming, a book to be... claiming to be Howard Hughes and got checks from the publisher mm -hmm. and cashed them. And, he, of course, he was found out. He never dreamt that Hughes was a recluse, as we all know. And he never dreamt that Hughes would come forward. And, of course, he did, in this case, said, look, I didn't write this book. I had nothing to do with it. And that killed it dead. And uh, yeah. th that was the end of him. Yeah. Who's the most interesting of all the, the scoundrels that you have oh, ever I'm, written about, as far as celebrity scoundrels? Well, the ladies like Errol Flynn. Yeah. Errol Flynn was, didn't commit a murder at all. But uh, you notice the name of the book, it says, uh, and, and other nefarious deeds. Mm -hmm. So I had to do that just to get in great guys like Errol Flynn. <laughs> Errol Flynn was just a lover. He loved women, and it just so happened that some of the women that he loved were 16 years of age, mm -hmm. and that's statutory rape in many right. places. And, of course, he was always seemed to be in trouble. Mind you, uh, in his defense, the ladies looked to be 26. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, this, these were pretty showgirl-type ladies. Yeah. And, but he was always in hot water in one way or the other for years and uh, paid a great deal of money to get out of the scrapes that he was in and always said it was well worth every penny. Mm -hmm. but this is, uh, these are some of my guys. You have a, a nice mix of kind of the evil, gruesome ones. I mean, there's Adolf Eichmann and there's, uh, I mean, Jim Jones in there, but, and there's also some kind of lighter-hearted, not light-hearted, but some not yes. as gruesome ones like Errol Flynn or John Labatt, a bit of Canadiana. How do you decide That's who right. gets in and who stays well, out? Well, you've got to try and balance the book. Some of them are pretty horrific. You know, when you talk about Jones and killing, really responsible for 900 deaths down in Guyana, Pretty gruesome Horrible. stuff. Remember the Kool-Aid yeah. pictures Horrible. and all that sort of thing? Horrible. Well, then you've got to mix it up. You can't just keep reading yeah. a book chapter after chapter with these horrible things. So you put in Errol Flynn, who was, like I say, uh, Shelley Winters. The great story uh, happened when I was trying to research Errol Flynn is one day he took out Shelley Winters when she was still young and beautiful, and he came to her house, and, and Shelley's mother saw him and said, if you don't, you don't take him, I will. <laughs> so, you know, he was really a handsome man. One of the most fascinating stories in here, and I, I remember reading it years ago, was, I think I'm pronouncing it right, Lord Lucan? Yes. Lord Lucan, of course, a, a prominent British lord, murdered his wife. That's right. And got away with it. He left and disappeared. disappeared. Went to Australia, they say. Went to, who well, knows? Well, you're, you're saying his wife, but really it was, it was his nanny. nanny. Who th he thought was his wife. That's right. And that, therein was the yeah. mistake he made. And he left. And he's never been found. Now, well, when I... Since the book has come out, I've received several sightings of Lord Lucan. <laughs> Blur Street, just the other day, I Did swear. swear <laughs> going into Holt Renfrew, I could have sworn it was Lord Lucan. He looked uh, older. Ian Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> well, a couple of guys also saw him in a grocery store in Saskatoon. But I don't think it was Lord Lucan. But they said that, you know, you've got to age him. Yeah. You know, he doesn't look like this anyway. It's been some time. But they said that there, he, chap in Saskatoon, not too many guys have English accents. You go up and he still had the English accent, looked just like Lord Lucan. One thing I like about your writing, and, and, and when you write your crime column in the Sun, I, I just love, 
the most lurid crimes in the world. You get, give us all the details, but there's a certain delicacy with how you write. Well, thank you. And I must say I appreciate it, because I keep expecting the worst and wince my way, but you never really get into the horror, no. nitty-gritty of it. Well, I learned long ago that if you really want to be popular, you can't just dwell on, you know, it's bad enough to say that someone stabbed someone 21 times without describing 21 open wounds. Yes. It's good enough. I mean, that's enough. The person's dead. Yeah. I'll go Leave on. Leave it at that. Leave it yeah. at that, and that's why elderly ladies read my column, as mm -hmm. do young kids, and uh, I, I find it, that's what appeals. So I don't want to become too gruesome. Mm -hmm. How did you get into doing this? Do you have a, a personal fascination with death? I haven't or killed I anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, haven't knocked off Come on, anyone. Max, you can no. share it with us. Although, <laughs> although at the tomato planting time and around our house in Etobicoke, people always call my wife and say, I just wanted to call you, that you're okay. You're not under the tomato patch. So I, I really am a... We have time for one quick question. I'm dying sure. to know, was Marilyn Monroe murdered? No, I don't think so. You don't think so? I think she took her own life. Because there was some speculation there was a oh, conspiracy sure. on the part of the Kennedys to... I think they were involved in her life. Yeah. And in had the, affairs with her. And in the state of mind that maybe led to her and suicide. Yes. I think possibly uh, Bobby uh, calling it quits with her mm -hmm. may have led to her suicide. Yeah. The book is called Celebrity Murders and Other Nefarious Deeds by Max Haynes. It's a great read. And Max, we, we thank you very much for joining us on I in Toronto. Today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. On Monday, our Monday makeover, makeover is next when I in Toronto continues. Back.